Okay, well that was fun. That was entertaining as Ohio State and TCU battle it out on the gridiron. And Ohio State gets the W. I don't really care who wins, but I put my money on Ohio State, so I'm a little bit more excited. That was fun. That was a great game. There was a lot of offense. Both quarterbacks threw for over 300 yards. You have Robinson out there making moves, making people miss. He's, he's an elite quarterback at the college level. For him to be as explosive as he is, it's hard to, to maintain him. But at, as, at the same time, it was great defensively. You have Ohio State making big-time plays. Early on in this game... You have TCU running this, this very fast-paced offense, and it was giving Ohio State trouble. But Ohio State cashes in on a touchdown, air quotes, a touchdown in the end zone off a bad play by TCU. Technically, it should have been a safety because the one player was out of bounds as he touched the football, but that's neither here or there because it was ruled a touchdown. But then TCU brings this surge, and they take it to them. And Ohio State's facing adversity going in the half. I mean, they're down going in the half. They can't get much going offensively. The one touchdown they scored was because of a ball getting loose in the end zone, and they, they covered it. They were facing adversity. And then they respond in the third quarter. Two touchdowns, a pick six. The defense steps up. And this is after they lose someone like Bosa. Bosa gets hurt. He's out for the game. It's some type of abdomen or groin injury. He's out for the game. And I'm thinking, damn, that's one of their best players. That could be so crucial. The defense steps up. Not only did they have that pick six, but they have a huge interception late in the ball game, which ends up actually winning them the game. I will say this. TCU's receivers are elites. They're legit. I mean, they can literally play man-on-man, man and win 85% of the time, it seems. They are lethal. They're fast. They can catch. Their receivers are fun to watch. But all around, that game was so entertaining. Dobbins out there, being a beast, lowering the head, lowering the shoulder, running, won't stop, won't be stopped. You had TCU run a trick play at one point on a on a kickoff return. They had a man hiding in the end zone, and they tried to throw it to the other side of the field, but it, it was clear he threw it seven, eight yards in front of him, which obviously wasn't a lateral. You had the head coach coming out, TCU all pissed off. I mean, it's clear as day. He threw it eight, eight yards in front of him. But that game was awesome. The energy in the building was electric. The players felt it. They played hard. Both sides played hard. TCU gave them a lot. I, I thought at one, one point they kind of crumbled for a little bit of time in that third quarter, which essentially costed them. But they were on Ohio State all night, it seemed, until around that third quarter. Ohio State stepped up and did what they had to do, and they got the job done. All without Urban Meyer. That was a true test. That was a test of what they had inside that locker room. How legit are they going to be? And people question Urban Meyer. Not Urban Meyer, their head coach stepping in now. How will he adjust in the second half if he needs to without Urban Meyer? Well, guess what? It seemed like that adjustment went just well. Considering their third quarter was easily their best quarter. It was a fun game. Without a doubt, that's college football. That's the energy we're looking for. Some other games, Alabama, and they went 62-7 to against Ole Miss. I took the under at 71.5. They scored 35 in like the first quarter. I'm thinking to myself, well, there's no, no shot. I'm not even looking anymore. I check out the end of the game. Bang, 69 points. Got it on the under, boys. Got it on the under. Two out there, two touchdowns. Obviously, it was such a big blowout at one point. It doesn't even matter. It's unbelievable to put up that many points consistently week after week after week after week. Just when you think Alabama is just so dominant, so somehow the next season they get even more dominant. It's crazy. And then you have Texas defeating USC. And there was a play in this game which kind of took it, it, took the momentum of the game and just switched it. USC sacked the quarterback in the end zone. 
Should have been a safety. Should have been the ball back. But no, they say he got out of the end zone and the ball was at the one. It was a bad call. It was clear as day. It was a safety. And that changed the momentum of the game a little bit. Now, Texas got things going. They blocked a punt, which led to a score. They, they got their offense grooving a little bit. But that play at that time of the game, because USC started this game out strong, taking shots downfield, making big plays, scoring touchdowns, that could have just changed the entire game. And it, the, the call changed the momentum for sure. But I will say this and give credit to Texas. They figured it out there at one point and got themselves rolling a little bit. At this point in time, ASU is leading. You have Herm Edwards making a terrible decision. Fourth and one when it's 14-7 to seven with two minutes left right before the half instead of kicking the field goal and making it 17-7. He goes for it on a terrible play call, which doesn't make any sense. Why would you not take the points there? He started at his own five, brings it all the way down. To go for it on a fourth and one when you can put yourself up 10 going into half? Come on, Herm. And then Utah Washington. It's another late one here. And you have Washington up at the half. So that is where we are. What a day for college football. Let me know your thoughts on that TCU-Ohio State game. Let me know your thoughts on Alabama being dominant, ASU, any other college football games that you watched today. Let me know about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.